What's good everybody? My name is Alchemy. Welcome to the channel. I've got a very special video that I'm really happy to share with you all today. It is a bass video, but there is something that is intrinsically different. Let's go ahead and take a listen to how it sounds, and then we'll talk about it here in just a sec. <laughs> Pretty interesting, lots of crazy weird timbres and stuff. Now, the thing about this that I find most fascinating is that we've got a really interesting approach to controlling the waveform, but for whatever reason, if you're somebody that's brand new, um, my name is Alchemy, I do lots of bass design, you can grab my presets at alchemy.com if you just want the fast version and maybe this is a little bit too advanced, or if you really want to deep dive into how this sound is made as a whole or the approach, then check out my master classes for the Arcana memberships. So with that being said, let's go ahead and actually do some reverse engineering real quick because I want to talk about the most important part, which is actually over here on the left. So if I were to turn this stuff off, what I want you to take a look at is over on the right side, uh, you're going to see that the waveform itself is going to be what we would describe as bipolar, meaning that the waveform is not going to be symmetric. You can see that one side is a square wave, and you can also see that one side is a uh, saw wave. So if I were to turn these off, which I'll talk about here in just a second, and I just have this guy, it's just a detuned saw wave, right? But what's really cool about this is once you introduce something called bias on a distortion, you can actually push the waveform uh, to either one side or the other. And so now if we take a look with the saw wave, you'll notice that the waveform is only popping out down below. And once we turn on the square wave, let me turn the unison off real quick, but you can see that now it's something completely different. And so what's so amazing about this or what's really interesting, however, uh, in any case, is that you can process these individually on their own. So what I would do, um, I have a filter or whatever, um, but what I've done is I've sent each signal to a separate lane and then these are running in parallel and i would say even though these are running in parallel you also want to experiment with serial as well there's a lot of different options again we can talk about more of that in the future but what i've done is i've applied effects to each specific side so now that we have that um, i'll turn the unison back on which you can create custom reses like this as well if you will it's not really custom but like it just creates a very different feel and a di very different vibe as opposed to just two waveforms detune you've actually got four now but the bias of each are kind of like phasing with each other and you're getting some interesting movement which i checked by the way just for you know the sake of understanding what it is that we're doing and because we're in midi you'll see that the phase is fine so that's not really something that you have to worry about um but in any case uh yeah so now that we have that we've got some delay distortion some eq stuff that's going on in between these and that's what's creating this kind of sound Now we're getting some crazy, crazy sound that's kind of coming in through this or whatever. But what's really cool is that I don't really care because this is basically saying, all right, well, I'm going to see how far I can process both of these waveforms individually. And it's different because you're not mixing two whole waveforms together. You're literally cutting it in half and saying, all right, only this top form, this top part of the waveform has uh, this specific kind of effects. And only this bottom part of the waveform has a specific processing chain. Now this is a new concept to me, so I haven't really necessarily refined it, but as a means of sending everything into say, one of my infamous uh, racks here, if you will, of different kinds of filtering effects and blah, blah, blah. That's how you end up getting some interesting sounds kind of like this. <laughs> Now, you might be saying, okay, well, Alchemy, the multipass rack is really what made the sound come together, but I'd actually argue 
that I would want you and challenge you to go back and focus on the individual processing that you have in between each sound as a whole. Because if I were to turn all this stuff off per se, actually let's say I just pull back off of the mix, I might still have some of the growls and whatnot, but the wideness, the, the interesting stuff that makes up the entire timbre definitely feels like it's going to be missed. See, it's just not quite the same. It's still there and it's still interesting and um, using complex filtering can still give you some interesting results. But imagine if we took something like this, this you know filtering rack and put that on one side and then we took a different one and put that on the other side, which I've already done um, in a previous experiment or whatever. And maybe I can do that in another video. I just don't really want to waste too much time. But you start to see that you can get some vastly different results and really weird complex sounds just by controlling what you're doing to the phase, um, either the positive phase or the negative phase of the sound uh, as a whole. So hopefully that was interesting to you. And um, I think that this is something that I want to explore further. I figured that I would try to do it now at the beginning as I just discovered it to kind of say like, hey, let's all give this a try if you're interested and see what you can come up with. If you send, if you get something cool, send it to me. If you want a head start on practicing, you can grab my presets from alchemy.com and just play with the different racks on the little bias thing or whatever. But yeah, I don't know, man, this is super cool to me. So thank you all so much. Um, I'm really trying to get to 20,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So if you find this interesting, it'd be really cool if you subscribe to the channel. Um, yeah, it's super cool uh, stuff. And we'll be doing more of this in the near future. Thank you guys. I will see you in the next video.